down to the protection of the kids. I think, and I can only speak from my experience where, you know, I was raised by my mom, my dad was in exile, and she needed to fend for me. Yeah. And even though I wasn't mature or old enough to take care of myself, she kind of had no choice. Yeah. Now, you know, every day she would go off to work and do whatever she needed to do, but that came with instructions. Mm -hmm. You're not to misbehave, you're to do your own work, and everything else that I needed to do, whether it was chores and stuff. Now, maybe looking at it from a Western perspective, one would say, what a negligent mother. How dare she leave that child alone? But where I come from, that was normal. You know what I yeah. mean? And in essence, we'd group ourselves. Yes, you had those kids who go steal guavas. Yeah. And then you had a bunch of other kids who would rather stay home, play at the back of the house. But what I mean is like, <clears throat> what I mean is, let's say, structural protection, right? Right. So which, it doesn't, it doesn't negate what you're saying because your, your, your own father was exiled. Right. Right. So the conditions made it such that you didn't have a father at home. Right. But right. I mean, so you weren't sort of getting that. And these kids, sort of that structure that protects them from having to go and steal guava just to eat. Right. Right? Because they didn't have enough food. Right. And that was their right. only way of eating. Right. Right? It was going and stealing guavas. And so Chipo gets impregnated by her grandfather. No one can find out what happened. That, that, I feel like that would have happened anyway. I mean, rapes happen. Okay, yeah, that happens. Yeah, it, ha it happens whether society is very structured or, you know, kids are still going to school, whatever. A rape is a rape. Um, what, what I'm just going to say is um, I, I feel like they were victims of, like, circumstances, you know. It's okay. not like their parents were, like, neglecting them. Their parents were away because they... They had to be away to, to be able to look right. after them. Yeah. But I was actually, before um, Kilichi interjected, I was going to say, even within the like little groups we form, there's always an adult that's overseeing things, whether you're aware or not. I mean, they say that it takes a village. Yeah. It truly does. Yeah. Because if you caught, even in the book, when they're about to perform the illegal yeah. abortion, yeah, mother love. she appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. And that is so true yeah. to our society, yeah. um, at least you know where I come from. Like yeah. You know that if you do something, there's a very limited chance you're going to get away with it, even if your parent is not there. Yeah. But I still felt that um, she should have been protected. In the sense of like the grandfather should have been reprimanded, or there should, have been, there should have been some dialogue shown in the book that if, if, if the grandfather was too old to be reprimanded there should have been some movement of force to say that this was wrong for him to do Absolutely. I know it happens I, right, I, I right. know these things do happen but there is there's always some sense of like there should have been some conversation to and, say and, and I think I think in the book she she made an attempt to to sort of like let it be known that oh that's what my grandpa did to me but it, it just it, it's just so unfortunate that Darling was, I think, she didn't you know, know, fixated. She didn't yeah, she was a bit fixated yeah. on on guavers and yeah. Like, yeah. you know, getting into like mischief. But I feel yeah. I feel like if she had you know, if she had like an adult audience listening to right. that confession. Right. But but is that a, a reflection of the society, right? So so uh, Darling's whole reaction that even if Chipo told an adult. Right? I is that sort of like a reflection of reality it's, it's that no one is going to... Because the adults normally don't pay attention to these kind of things. Yeah. They'll probably hear it and probably reprimand the child instead for mm. making false accusations. Uh, yeah. They don't want to hear it. Yeah. How mm. can a grandfather do this? Do right. this. Child. Child. So that she's really trying to show how vulnerable these kids are right. yes. that anybody amongst the family could be doing this to right, the kid right. because of the situation that has been created by however they got to this point, you know, to be living in a shack and then being taken care of by somebody who then starts abusing them. So I think she, she's making an attempt to let us know 
that some of these crimes even go unpunished. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. especially in chaotic like situations. Day, especially, like you know, just even the, the whole point of um, Born Free's death, right? Yes. Such a violent thing that the kids witnessed mm -hmm. it, right? And, and Born Free, so it's like saying, how could you actually feel protected if the government is even killing its own subjects, right? right? So Born Free is trying to sort of, you know, say we need choice, we, we need a new government in. And it said, no, you don't. Yeah, you're not going to come in and talk about that, mm. right? No, you don't. So, and they just brutally kill this guy and the kids sort of see that. And now the kids are reenacting this. Then how, how are they going to grow up, right? Are they going to grow up thinking that my government protects me, that there's, no, I don't think that's going to happen. One day I will live here in a house just like that, Spo said, biting into a thick guava. She points to the big blue house with a long row of steps, flowers all around it. A really nice house. You watch the lorry get smaller and smaller until it's just a dot. And when it finally disappears, we turn around and walk back towards the shanty. None of the lorry is gone, gone. We do not scream anymore. We are as quiet as graves, sad like the adults coming back from burying the dead. Then bastard says, Let's go and play war, and then we take off and run to kill each other with our brand new guns from America. She knew what she was talking about. I watch her chew, her cheek bulging, she swallows, she starts to peel what was left of the guava with her side teeth. How are you going to do that, I ask. Spo spits out the pill and she says with her big eyes, I just know it. Anybody who picks up that book from Zimbabwe would have this nostalgic feeling. Of like, yes, oh, I was going to say that. Yes. like. If, it it evokes a lot of like nostalgia, like right. from the very first like chapter right. to the end, it's like you're like walking in her shoes, yeah. like mm -hmm. whether she's eating guavas, whether she's, you know, in Living Kalamazoo, Michigan, Michigan yeah. dealing with the cold, everything. There's a chapter where she goes about, you know, like we left everything, you know, we, we left our countries without even mm. like, you know, like giving like you know sacrifices that we normally yeah. give to like our ancestors and yeah. stuff like that mm -hmm. like you know stuff like that to come into the snow and thinking that uh you know the snow is a punishment the weather is a punishment yes yeah. yeah. i say this all the yeah. time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, i feel like i'm being punished <laughs> so, <laughs> earlier we we're talking about how this how warm it was today and yeah. like my spirit lifted yeah i was just happy for no reason yeah. because i think going back you sort of equate the sun to home the, the blue warmth, skies yeah. the yeah. blue skies yeah. Yeah. The, you know the warmth yeah. reminds you She's, of of you know you you upgrade she also talks about jacaranda trees yes yes i just close my eyes i can smell <laughs> right? right purple oh, and gosh. i remember taking my entire my street shoes, walking through and and i see those men playing what you call the drops, drops, drops yeah, on yeah, the yeah, ground yeah boy i would forgotten about those guys <laughs> Sitting there doing that, yeah. and she comes from Bulawayo. Yeah, right. she comes from Bulawayo. Yeah. I'm from Harare. I'm from South Africa. And so, I can so, still so the, the thing just relates and it paints. And then I see the women too sitting there plaiting their hair and just gossiping. Yeah. 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 So, for some reason, the nostalgia is just too contagious. It is, yeah. it is. Yeah. Even, even when she point. describes like um, a city where there's just so much activity. Like when they go to Crossroads Mall and she says it's too quiet in this mall. Yeah. If if they, if we were back at home, the women would be the women would be selling their yeah. weapons. The kids would be there. doing this. Yeah. The men would be doing We're this. Doing, yes. They'll be talking, but their voices wouldn't be so high because yes. men are supposed mm -hmm. to, you know, keep their voices low and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like it just made me think of just being at home, just seeing all the action, yeah. right. all the activity. A but woman carrying a child on her back. You know, stuff right. like that. So, yes, the book is great, bringing all these memories, but I believe she's also asking us to do something, right? As the reader, as to do something other than just reminisce the memory. She's asking yes. us to, other than the fact, do we, do, do we need, do need, need, do we need new, new names? names? Yeah. yeah. Which everybody has a different answer to. <laughs> but I think she's asking us... Um, I don't know. I believe. For well, I mean, what what do you think she's asking us to do? No, I, th I think I think she's I think asking us to take. She she does that. She does that. I think on three or four um, different uh, okay. circumstances. She's like, okay, 
I think I think she does ask us to do something via the words of our grandma saying, "Oh, all of you are leaving, fleeing, going away. Who's going to take care of us? Yes. Who's going to Who's going to take care of our homeland? Yes. Who's going to look after the homeland? Yes. What are we going to become of if right. all of you just leave? Yeah. Right. So to me, it just got me thinking, like, okay, to go back. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really you, interesting you, that you, you bring. If you don't have a conscious thought about what to do, how you're gonna take action. No, that I is do. the point of the book. Yeah. What I believe, you yeah. know, it's like okay, without reading this book, this NGO thing again. I'm sorry, <laughs> but really, really, I can't stand <laughs> them. Okay. All right. Now, without reading this book, I didn't really give you that much thought. All I know is I hate the commercial on TV. Yeah. But after reading this book, it's now you're now you're now thinking consciously. Okay. You know the NGO, the guns, the poverty. You right. Know, okay. and, 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 right. How can I make a change? How can I really go back home and yeah. change? And this is what the book does. Yeah. It makes you start thinking. Yeah. Because, you start thinking, so then because, you, you because it's, you're right. Because the thing is, right? Someone else reading this who who doesn't have the proper context, right? Let's say an American or you know European or whatever, will think, oh my God, these kids, these poor kids, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. we we'll just see it through that lens. Right. So, in fact, the way some the way some some papers or whatever would describe this novel is oh the story of a little girl who leaves her country to come to America. America. Yes, they skipped. That is <laughs> not <laughs> what the story is about. Yeah, I know, I know. It's I, not I, what I, the novel I, is about. I, it's I, not about just you know darling leaving to I come read, to America. I read that, and it's I, not I, a I, book about you poverty. That when when she does actually come to America, the narrative. Changes. changes yeah so now I, I mean like the beginning was very spicy and yes just colorful yes and it made me think about how even though i'm still the same person i was it's almost like you slowly die it's like the snow oh my right gosh, it's yeah. Yeah. And she was describing the I snow think it's like the snow <laughs> just like just like what's not reality the variety of the foods that are offered out here but she talks about how bland. The, yeah, yeah. It it's almost like she was mirroring that, that, that was just way. to create. Yeah, that was a dramatic film. Uh, Go ahead. Organic. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it was. You, you grew that's up not, here, right? Yes, but it's not, not here. here. No, 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 it's no, no, not no, 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 no,